and so <clears throat> uh, my apologies I had to uh, come back and record this this part later um, in telling it, uh, it, it so it's been so long since I told this encounter. Um, when, when, when you tell somebody about something, uh, the reason it, it helps them get over it in a way is because when you're hit, when you're hit with a, a fear, and it, it goes inside of you, and um, for some people they can forget it, and it doesn't really affect them. Uh, they just completely black it out and for others you know you repeatedly if you're if you're capable of it um, you repeat it and you tell people about it and each time you you tell it you kind of release some of that darkness and the fear and uh, <clears throat> you kind of get comfortable with it and um, so and and there's other people that they'll take that fear and it, it hit them so hard they can't really tell anybody about it but they don't forget about it and and they replay it and uh that those people that get hit with that fear uh, without being able to express it it'll it'll age them real quick uh, rapidly those people usually get like white hair you know or whatever but so by telling it, you know, telling people about it, you uh, you kind of get comfortable with it. And I hadn't told anybody about this in years, so uh, reliving that that moment was a little bit uh, drastic for me. So I'm going to come back in as best as I can. Um, so <clears throat> it sounded like it was right outside them cedar trees and it it hit so hard uh, and it it just wasn't odd audio you know it, it just wasn't loud it like hit you know it like if somebody dropped a four by eight sheet of plywood not even thin I'm talking thick like a three-quarter inch sheet one inch sheet and, and they leaned it you know you had it lengthwise uh, with the eight foot part on the, on the ground and, and they just pushed it towards us right in front of that campfire uh, that campfire like the way it you know it moved like it a four by eight sheet of plywood just fell with that one inch thickness you know not some thin piece a nice heavy piece uh, that campfire hit you know it reacted to it but I mean we it hit it hit me I can only express myself so it hit me so hard um, the way I've described it is it was like it knocked me out of me it knocked the soul out of me as I sat there frozen kind of removed from uh, reality um, uh, the best way to describe it is if you've ever uh, woken up and, and you know you're awake but you can't move anything and it scares you you know and you go to shout but you can't even move your mouth uh, you're just, mm, you know what I mean um, if if you've ever experienced I think they call it sleep paralysis um, if you've ever experienced that <clears throat> you're coming pretty close to uh, what this felt like um, because we just sat there uh, for several seconds you know of course it felt like dude it, it felt like an infinity but I'm sure it was it was several seconds and uh, what broke the uh, the glass that had frozen us in time was on our uh, watches per hour it would beep and uh, our watches were synced but it was off by maybe a, a millisecond you know so our beeps went off and it it, it broke 
like the uh, like I said the the glass and like I went to look at my watch and as soon as as soon as I did uh, this thing which was you know we're sitting on on the north side and it's 1000% on the south side and um, it <clears throat> it starts like walking and it sounded like uh, how I described it man is is 10 cows on two feet um, and it, it's walking from the south over towards towards the west you know and as it's uh, it's got like about a second or two a good solid second maybe two seconds between its stride you know it's boom and it had it wasn't just boom it was like it had impact and then spread you know like it was a boom almost and um, I don't know how long that walk took but each step uh, between you know it had that second that second felt like uh, a month <laughs> um, looking back uh, so much um, I think what it was was so much detail was observed in those moments it slowed it down to where everything was surreal in this um, floaty state of what is what am I experiencing it's like you know some people will be like well, why didn't you do that bro? you know when you're in this moment it's different than just somebody asking questions and uh, that's all I got to say about that but it it walked and as it's walking you know, see uh dad played drums so the best way i could compare it at the time and it's the way i'm going to use now was it was like uh if you took his drumsticks and you smacked them together you know that that snapping sound uh, with i think he used 7a or double a or something that it, it's been a long time but it, they were decent sized drumsticks and i mean this was loud and uh it wasn't drumsticks and uh it wasn't like I, i've heard knocks and stuff uh would um but anyway this was not a knock this was a um so when when you get some dogs uh they can be uh you know two uh it can be two neighborhood dogs if, if they get mad enough to bring out the uh the instinct level on them um uh you see it more in the wild uh, like coyotes or wolves when um when an alpha is is challenged um they'll do this um, where they're they're kind of licking the air and snapping and they're showing their teeth the whole time as an intimidation they'll fluff up hunch their head like I've seen coyotes doing it you know and uh, it'll be a it'll be the biggest display uh, that that dog is capable of doing will be when it's in that moment uh, it's quite a sight to see but <clears throat> I know by by the way it sounded um, that that's what that was it, it just didn't make any sense because it was loud enough it was echoing it, like it seemed like it echoed through the valley and um, I know that's what I was hearing but what was messed up is how big the the, the chatter from the teeth was it it made no sense and it it you know in reality so let's say you know a second between its strides it maybe took uh to walk that from 12 to um uh, three it would be from 12 to three from the south to the west right um it, it maybe took it uh 15 maybe 20 seconds worth of strides you know 15 20 strides um 
but the the amount of distance it had to cover if you if you went outside on that ring of trees and you went from the south side around to the uh the west side you'd be going like uh, uh at least a half a football field uh, maybe close to 75 yards if if i was laying it out on a football field it it wasn't a small ring you know it was a decent sized ring on the outside so it, it covered that in like 15 20 seconds uh, but but that that moment um, it felt like you know several minutes um, so it gets over there and it, it stops and I don't know what all went down during that time I really can't tell you anything but you know what I remember as far as what what the fear will will allow me to explain and the next thing that happens is uh it it starts coming through the trees and this is where it got the nickname uh, 10 cows on two feet is because uh, coming through the trees it sounded like 10 cows but they it only had two feet it wasn't cows it was very uh, confusing you know because we've heard a bunch of cows coming through the woods and that's what this sounded like uh, but there was only two really heavy feet carrying it and um, so it's running up on the west side you know just the same uh, using the same clock basically if we're sitting at six o'clock on this pond now it's coming up on uh, you know three o'clock so it's not quite opposite of the pond it's kind of off to our 90 you know so uh, it it come up and uh it stopped right at the edge of where the trees were and like basically the uh, the glow of the fire uh it, it went into the trees but it didn't go that far um, basically just the first trees along that row you know it wasn't every tree it was just like this tree then that tree then this tree the ones that stuck out that you could see those trees but anything past that initial uh this tree that tree it was all just black tree you know what i mean it was dark and um this thing uh come up to just where that dark is you know we never saw anything it just it existed right there at the dark and it run up though dude with the sound of 10 cows on two hooves and it got right there and it stopped and is when it stopped like the same like you know what i'm saying uh the same four by eight sheet plywood falling wind come up from that way and it was uh accompanied by the loudest uh what it sounded like uh was like a, a white tailed buck when you disturb them you know and they'll do that 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 blow and they'll they'll run off and they'll flick their white tail and they'll blow at you uh, but if you whistle you know you can get them to come back around but it, anyway uh, that's it was emotionally confusing because yeah it was super loud super big and it just what the hell does but uh, now all of a sudden instinctfully I just heard a white tail buck yeah it sounded like it was a thousand pound white tail buck but it still sounded like it was a white tail buck but um that all like went away like at the same time the whole what the hit uh it went away because because whatever it was that came at us just started backing up. I didn't hear it turn around. It just started, you know, the same ten cows on, on two legs started backing up through those trees. And, and you could see them just, you know, shifting around and moving, uh, not through them, but like the, the tops of them along the skyline against the backdrop of the, of the, uh, the stars. You could see them moving. And it just backed out. And, uh, I don't know relativity to time as far as how long we sat there before we finally said, you know, 
what are we going to do? And it was like, we had a conversation, and this was the breaking point of, um, we're going home. You know? Uh, <laughs> you know, we said we were going to do this and this, but uh, that showed up. So, we're going home. And once that decision was made, um, he went to, I know what he did, you know, he, he see, we had figured out, um, because before this, when uh, he was in college, we used to have fun with a lot of his friends, man, and we, we went camping this one place I ain't gonna say either man but at this place dude we had we'd cut down so many of these pine trees and cedar trees and thrown them on the fire because uh, we found out that green or not once the uh, the paraffins inside of them them saps start igniting uh, they blaze up and we had the biggest fire going uh, one night uh, back in the day as they say uh, but we had learned that, you know, so, and we were surrounded by, um, cedar, so he went to town snapping branches, and, and making that, that campfire, at that point, we no longer cared about, uh, the ring of fire, and the cork, or nothing, um, we figured if, uh, if we burned, if we caught the woods on fire, and, and just burned that place down, it didn't matter, um, because we weren't getting out of here, and, we were going to give these give people a, a place to start looking I mean that's that's how scared we were um, he built that fire and while he's building that fire dude I'm I can't tell you how long this took I know it was pretty quick but <clears throat> so uh, I went and I found like a, a decent chunk like about a, the size of a salt and pepper shaker like a, a glass one you know um, it, of the heart of of uh, the cedar heartwood um, for I, I found two of them you know from the same chunk uh, like a root sticking up and I broke off like one of the one of the thumbs and like it was it was a beautiful purple you know and <clears throat> I hit it a couple times with the with the hatchet and it made these decent chunks and I went and I got another you know stick a piece like about a, a, a two foot stick, maybe not even that, and uh, I hit it with the machete on the tip, you know, made the, the X, ch -ch, two little cuts, <clears throat> and I took that heartwood and I slid it down in that, that, that cross, and uh, then I went and I got uh, some strips of cedar, because cedar uh, bark is like stringy. So I went over and I, I pulled off some some strips, you know, and I, I wrapped I wrapped the uh, the heartwood onto that that stick and I tied it and made it as best as I could for as fast as I I could do it, and I made two of those, and uh, I did it pretty quick. I'd say two minutes, maybe three minutes tops. Uh, it was that that was my single singular focus was I, we had to have a way of uh, carrying light because we we didn't have time to wait for all these woods to burn down we had to get home you know we just I don't know the, the logic and proportion of what was going down at the time but um we had to get home even knowing we heard what we heard like instinctively we had to get home and so uh, the coyotes you know you heard them chirping well we hadn't heard uh, uh, 10 cows on two legs for however long all this has uh, took to transpire but what we did notice was uh, them coyotes to the south that were chirping um, uh, they done they done picked up like uh, they're running you know like it's a full moon and and, and they're in pursuit and and they had from the sounds of it uh, they had their alpha with them you know and uh, now <clears throat> a backstory on the coyotes is uh, where we lived on the full moon 
Uh, now, you know, some some naturalist or somebody's going to say, well, according to this, and um, this is uh, has nothing to do with what's written in a book, okay? But on our porch during a full moon, you could hear three specific packs, uh, no doubt, you know. You had to pack <clears throat> the pack off to the, the north, um, and, and you could tell, you know, maybe five to ten dogs you know it was the smallest of of the three and when they would run they wouldn't run that long but they would run you know and then uh to the west you had the big pack and this is where you know somebody's gonna say that's impossible but i'm just telling you what i heard all right and so off to the west it, it was a good 15 to 20 dogs that was that was if you combined every other pack of coyotes and them valleys dude it was like whatever alpha dog over there was running and it this wasn't the same alpha dog either man you just just uh, each pack had their own alpha dog you know this, them them <clears throat> them alpha dogs didn't sound like 10 cow on two feet um they uh they sounded like a coyote alpha dog but anyway, so the, the pack to the west had, you know, 15, 20 dogs. And the pack to the south was somewhere between those two. You know, it had, it had 7 to 12 dogs maybe, you know. And I could tell by the sound of the pack that this was quite obvious, the, uh, the pack to the south. And we had it sounded like they were about a, a mile maybe half mile away and so we had maybe um, you know 10 minutes so uh, time relativity is kinda kicks in from there um, I, mean, I said that out loud you know I judged all that within a split second you know instinctually as soon as I heard him pick up and you heard that alpha dog signal like he's he's chasing something and all them other ones started barking I said uh, I said we got about 10 minutes and he knew what I was talking about you know um, because they were coming towards us and that's where uh, like as a guide because um, he was more or less relying on me and I, I need to say something else about this area where we were, um, it was laid out like a, a jigsaw puzzle of uh, forests and fields and forests and fields. And, and all those forests and fields, you know, the shape was natural. Some of them, the fields were formed um, probably <clears throat> 10,000 years ago when a bolt of lightning struck and it burned all them woods and this is only you know the woods are where they are because that's as far as they made it you know but it was forests and fields and hills and valleys and creeks and uh, so when you're moving through there um, you don't want to really be in the valleys uh, they're the most twisted route you can take and they are the easiest to uh, get lost in if you don't have a good internal compass uh, you'll wind up missing and um, so ideally what we wanted to do was run out to the south along the ridge we wanted to stay on that ridge till it forked off and, and we could uh, we could go east and then uh, just just a little bit enough to, to drop off in the right valley to head north um, and what we wound up doing is uh, now I didn't know it at the time you know this is instinct thinking or this is this is hindsight looking back on on what we did uh, I can tell you the directions because what we did was we dropped off to the east you couldn't go off the uh, the north side really um, that 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 pond and that ring of trees that ridge that ran to the south uh, it started at that pond in that 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 ring of trees and that pond and ring of trees kind of stuck out there 
on that ridge, <clears throat> like a like a keyhole, uh, you know. And, and the ridge picked up. It, like if it was a keyhole, the ridge picked up. <coughs> excuse me. The ridge picked up where the bottom of the key would be, and that pond was where the key would be. You know, the round part. Excuse me. So, what we wanted to do, well, you couldn't really go off the north side. It actually had a couple rocks and, and sheer spots to it. And uh, the west side was a pointless direction. So, uh, the trees in the valleys off to the west, they were thick. And uh, they, you would lose that <clears throat> the field texture to it. It was more just forest at uh, uh, that time in that scenario that's the last place you want to go is uh, towards that was the direction of what I called the uh, the undiscovered country because over in that direction uh, the trees just got huge and uh, they were so it was an old growth forest out that way uh, you could have drove a car between the trees um, and the way you could tell an old growth forest is uh, you'll see these uh, uh, see my dad was a he was a lumberjack there for a while so you'd see these these trees they called kings and uh, what what made them was um, when a tree dropped its seed <clears throat> usually a tree drops more than than one seed in one area um, you know, even if it's like an acorn, it's going to be like a small cluster. And when uh, the forest is untouched for so long, that it's able to drop that, that seed, seed cluster. And those trees, uh, they grow up, you know, next to each other their whole life. Eventually, if, they're, if they ain't messed with, uh, they'll actually grow together. And, and twist around um, and for a little while you'll get like a pond that forms in the middle you'll we had found them in, in various states of uh, growing together yeah. especially through those woods you know but um, it, it it's quite a sight and and when they're uh, fully grown together when you got a king tree that that tree is uh, it's huge um, it, it looks like it's a single tree but if you know anything about trees, you, that's what it is, you know. And um, they stand out. Uh, they stand out. And that's what I mean when I would say, you know, it took all three of us boys and dad to stretch around a tree. We we ain't small. Um, we're pretty big, pretty big fellas. We're all six foot plus, you know. We're, we're big people man and uh, so when we had to stretch around a tree and it took any more than like two of us if it took you know <clears throat> we would go out in the forest with dad <clears throat> and I'd like to go uh, sang hunting while he's he's uh, you know cutting trees and while I was out there you know if I found a big tree you know I'd let him know and uh, so and and how many of us it took to, to reach around it was one way of measuring it um, so but we had seen several trees that you know if each one of us is six foot plus and our arms are going to be like that so you can imagine four six foot people that's 24 24 feet you know those are big trees um, you just don't find those anymore you know but uh, you didn't want to go west. You'd find yourself out, out, out in the deep woods, man. So, and plus, it was opposite direction. So you wanted to head uh, ideally south and run that ridge. But <clears throat> I guess we took the the lesser of two evils and. I, honestly, we just went opposite of the last place that we heard uh, 10 cow on two feet. And we went straight east, straight down that hill. 
it was a steep hill man and um i remember looking back and he had built that fire so big uh you know um so so kentucky red cedar uh, these weren't that tall because of how twisted and and gnarled they were you know they were they had the big trunks that went into the ground but they were relatively short because uh some some of those field cedar trees are are a uh, a true interpretation of what uh sun wind time and water uh look like if it was left to grow um the way it's just all all twisted and and, and holding its own um in, in a in a world that's just trying to tear you apart and so the, this forest had these ancient cedars and it had that big tree the main big one that we stayed under and he built that fire it, it was like standing tower over the rest uh, there were other um, uh, chestnuts up in there but that one was like a king you know that was a king chestnut that one probably uh, a father every other tree that was a chestnut in that valley you know and um, but it was standing there over top to top of them uh, cedars uh, flicker in different colors in, in that uh, that uh, that fire he had built another thing I guess I'd mention uh, is is that cedar burn like an orange an orange red flame um, it wasn't it wasn't really bright it was it was almost like a, a road flare you know it was it had its own glow to it it wasn't it wasn't like a normal fire and so that 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 tree is is flickering these oranges and reds uh, and it just that was that was one hell of a way to leave um, normally we would never leave any place like that like that uh, we we had a rule uh, leave it like you were never there and if you can make it better before you go and um, but with the fear we had that rule didn't apply it was more like we wanted to survive and if we didn't um, we wanted people to know where we were and uh, so down the hill we went with those uh, cedar torches I had made and they worked pretty good and uh, so you know we went straight into the the set of woods we didn't stop for nothing uh, we went down the hill straight into the woods you know coyotes barking off to the south um, they they had moved in uh, we you know maybe from a, a 10 minute head start we're down to maybe we got like seven minutes you know and uh so we hit them woods and we're running through them woods and uh <clears throat> so the way you run with a torch isn't like what you see in the movies where you know they they got the torch out front for cinematic purposes and looking all heroic um you'd go blind and you'd run into a tree uh that's the reality of it um the way you run through the woods with a torch is you want to hold that torch up above your head you know um, you don't want <clears throat> you don't want uh you don't want it far enough back to where it's casting your shadow in front of you and obstructing anything uh, you want it far enough up to where it's not flash blinding you and your eyes can adjust to the the amount of light it's granting and you run with that torch held above your head uh, and that's the way you run through the woods you know and that's how we were running through them woods and uh, he was looking to me for guidance so I'm running and in those moments um, I wasn't guiding I was just running uh, and it was, so we ran and the next field hit and we just ran in the, in the trees the next line of trees hit and we just ran straight into them and um, so uh, 
this next set of trees we ran into was a mistake because uh, they lasted for like uh, 30 40 minutes I don't even know they lasted quite a while they lasted until our torches went out so we're running and running and running and um, it was like you know that scene in, in Indiana Jones where she's in the snake temple holding that torch and all the other torches went out and she's holding that last torch and she's looking at it and yeah Indy and well we knew our torches were going out but we didn't have the luxury of just standing there and looking at them you know we're we're running for our lives um and uh we knew they were going out because instead of being able to see you know 10 20 feet now we're seeing like five or ten feet <laughs> you know and it's getting darker and darker and darker and then uh, you know it's it hit that point where it was like we kind of slowed down and his his went out first and then i had slowed down and i was like he was maybe uh you know 20 30 feet behind me and I, as soon as I stopped, mine went out. And, you know, <clears throat> it was another one of those awkward sil silence moments. Um, now, it, it didn't last long. I dropped my knee. I said, you know, where are you? And uh, he was like, uh, I'm over here. And, you know, he was behind me. So I turned around and... I just caught the tail end of his Indiglo uh, wristwatch, you know, being waved around, and, and the, it was so dark. Uh, it was like it, it wasn't as bright as when we went there. It, 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 if anything, we should have had more light because the way the uh, the Milky Way shifted and, and Orion's belt and everything coming up, and we had more starlight, but it was darker. But I had caught the uh, the tail end of his uh, his uh, indigo indiglo, and it looked like a little you know yellow snake just phew, off in the distance. And I you know I replied, I see you, and I was like, uh, but I, I, we whispered. I'm not gonna whisp whisper for the story, but we whispered back and forth. I was like, I see you, and I, I hit mine, and I waved it. And the way they worked is uh, you'll hit them and you'll get like three seconds or four seconds of this green neon glow. And uh, then it goes off. And no matter how many times you hit it, it's got like a, a cool down. It was like a second or something, you know. But <clears throat> so I signal him and we got, we got our locations, you know. And it's like, uh, well, who's got the striker? You know, we packed up in such a hurry. And um, it turned out I had the striker. So, um, you know, I'm like, I got it. And I said, hold tight, you know. So he stayed there and I stayed here. And it was like, at first I, I pulled out the striker and I'm, I'm hitting it and I'm hitting it and I'm hitting it. And uh, before, if just a single spark, if a single uh, spark hit this, this wood, it, it would light up. And I'm I'm kneeled down, you know, and it's laying on the on the on the leaves, and I'm I'm showering it with flint and steel, and it's just showered in the in these uh these sparks, and it's not taking a spark. I mean, it was such a shower that the wet leaves underneath were starting to turn, you know, brown and blacken from heating up and drying out and they were going to catch on fire before this this wood caught on fire and he was like what's up and i said i don't know you know and I, he's like well what's it doing i said it's not lighting and he said well try again and i said i am you know and the whole time that whole conversation i'm just running it running it shh, and it's not lighting i said hold up you know i got another idea and uh so i i I pulled what was left of the strand of uh, 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 bark off, and I, I knocked that uh, that you know little chunk of heartwood out, 
and I grabbed that stick and I just I pulled it apart and you could you could tell it was it was dry just the way it sounded it sounded like kindling when it came apart and they had a couple of the uh, the nice fine fibrous uh, strands that pulled you know it wasn't just a, a clean break so I, I had some natural kindling to use and you know I, I, I took the best piece of those and I put that on top with the other ones underneath and I started showering that and it would not take um, it would not take a spark at all and so he's like what's up and I was like dude something's wrong and he's like well let me try and so I was like well hit your watch and he hit his watch so I was like I stood up and I started going towards him but the, the darkness was so dark it was so dark I I had to walk like I was blind I was feeling around I mean I used my indiglo but it, it was not penetrating enough for me to see so I'm kind of walking now towards him I can see him so I know it's open but I'm still walking cautiously with my hands out you know like I can't see nothing um, and, and we do that like five or six times before I'm able to get to him and uh like I get to him and there was this there was this tense moment you know I had just got to him and we were I guess we started talking because now we're together and a little more excited and it was like well what the hell you know here I try this and uh, he, he no longer than had it and he was trying to shower his and we heard you know we still had the coyotes uh, uh, off to the uh, south which now they're they're kind of moving they've done moved more east they're still south but it's like they're southeast because the ridge they're running the valley instead of the ridge and they're going to come around that valley and that valley will actually cut us off where we are like about a another half mile up and um <clears throat> but so we we've got that going on and um we heard right up on the ridge above us uh, like uh, now this was a knock you know and it was like uh, it was like it sounded like a, a sledgehammer or, or, or a hammer on a, a the end of a 2 by 4 you know that clear wood ring you know it was an obvious uh, knock on a tree uh, which wasn't odd well we heard the knock you know so we know that <clears throat> normally if you heard that the the big black hairy thing is around so here we are they, we can't get a flame um, it's getting darker for some odd reason um, we got coyotes chasing us and, and now we're completely blind and, and now we possibly might have the big black hairy thing just uh, messing with us and like within seconds of hearing that knock you could feel the air just it got damp um, there was a, a like a, a thick fog just randomly rolling in and it, it took away the starlight and so now <clears throat> we're in absolute black so before the fog rolled in I knew there was a field off to the west about a good uh, football field um, you could see it and uh, it was kind of where we were going before the torches ran out so <clears throat> the fog rolled in and it's it's as black as you could possibly imagine and know you knew it was fog because you could see it at first until it all went black and then you could just feel the moisture and uh, we couldn't see nothing but I knew we had to go west and uh, I still had a good sense of where that was um, it was kind of just straightforward in the direction I had kneeled when I got to him so I said you know we're gonna go that way and uh, it was so black we were cycling our indiglo lights but it didn't matter um, they only kind of made this uh, 
small glow aura around the thick fog <clears throat> and we're walking with our hands out you know touching everything in front of us like we're blind people um, for you know that hundred yards um, and <clears throat> that might as well has it, it might as well have been a mile um, and so luckily it was the field and so we we come out in that field and um, there was a, a circle of cattle and so apologies my mic keeps cutting out and uh, I can't figure it out but it, it's made this all kind of chopped up and one of the parts I had to I had to come back and add in here was um, those, those cows they were circled we could barely see them but we could tell they were circled and um, you don't want to you don't want to mess with uh, a group of circled cattle um, when they're circled they're about as irritated a as they can get and um, we figured maybe since we were coming through the woods and it, it was just so dark and, and nobody could see nothing um, they they circled up naturally uh, maybe from the knock maybe just from us who knows um, but when they're circled like that they're like bison uh, they keep their uh, their young in in the center of the circle and, and you got to be careful um, it, it's like I said the most agitated they'll be and what you got to watch out for is um, any mom uh, one of those calves in in that circle uh, they they are the bravest cows in that circle and um, so we had a line of the, these meat cows that lived we, we lived on a farm with about 3800 head of uh, meat cows um, and they were like browns and dark dark browns and, and blacks there wasn't any real white cows among them so they were real hard to see they were circled up uh, they were they were like uh, stomping you know um, uh, spitting uh, they, they were doing their moves and grunts and um, uh, several of them came at us um, so we backed up you know and, and they followed and and now uh, I'll leave it off here and go back into the other so we didn't want to go go back into the woods we just wanted to uh, to get away from the cows so <clears throat> we we ran ran along the uh, the edge of the woods right there where the canopy overhangs but the edge of the woods you know you're not in the woods you're in the field um, and we ran that uh, in the opposite direction of the cows um, but actually in the direction of the uh, the coyotes at this time um, along that along that line um, and we were we were still kind of blind I bet we couldn't see but maybe uh, you know five feet in front of us if if that and we're we're kind of walking through there with our hands out still we were in the field but you know just our hands were up out of instinct be not being able to see that much and um, we came up to this area where it looked like there were these golden sticks just standing up out in the field in, against this like mist and darkness so uh, <clears throat> you know out of curiosity uh, we walked over to them and we walked up to the closest one to us and you know like a blind person would stick their hands out to feel somebody's face if if they're wanting to uh to know what they look like like that's what we were doing there in the dark we were both sticking our hands out and when we touched it, it we found out it was grass but <clears throat> it, it felt dry um it, it was weird you know so i'm like huh and i slid my hand down it to grab the base i didn't know if it was going to pull up or what so i did that twist you know and when I twisted, it, instead of pulling up out of the ground, it, it snapped. And that snap 
was like and it was such a significant moment <clears throat> it was like neither one of us took a breath um, it was it was loud and like you could hear the dust flying out of it it sounded so dry and uh, <clears throat> so we both got excited and I'm like, get the striker, you know, because he had the striker at that time. And I'm like, I take it, and I, I break off the, the seat in, and I'm, I'm fluffing all this up. And, and he's uh, he's working the striker, and we get a we get an amber, and we get a flame. And um, so, you know how the the cedar flame was like this red orange. Um, it was light, but it wasn't bright. Uh, this here grass, uh, it was like a bright white. I mean, it was white, white light. Um, and <clears throat> in in uh, in that darkness, at that moment, uh, after what we had been through, um, you know, you know, when Sam is uh, uh, fighting that Shirog or whatever, and he pulls out that light of Galandriel, the way it. It, it it just lit up and pushed back the darkness. Um, that that flame from that torch, that's what it felt like. It it, it was so bright. It was like it, it pushed back the fog, and it even pushed back the cows. Um, they were, you know, some ten yards off, twenty yards off, and, and they took a back step. You know, you heard the shift. And uh, so it lit up the darkness. And uh, when it did, you could see, dude, there were these tufts of grass everywhere right there. Like um, the uh, the cows must not have liked the taste of them because um, they grew unchewed on. <clears throat> and I guess they, they also repelled the water, too. Um, but we saw all that grass and you know we we were excited we started running around grabbing as many as we could you know he grabbed one he broke it now uh, he came over he lit it off mine we're running around grabbing all this grass like nothing else in the world existed at that moment that's what we that's what we were doing you know uh, getting as much as we could and um, the it burned out pretty quick um, like we had like a two foot three foot pieces at the max and they lasted maybe you know four or five minutes <clears throat> so you'd go through um you'd go through some some torches pretty quick um but so we're gathering it you know and it was about the the same time we were lighting up the second torch uh that we heard abel it was the first time we'd heard Abel in what felt like years, you know, and uh, he he just never replied to our our yelling and whistling, <clears throat> and you know we we didn't yell or whistle. Uh, we weren't going through all that again. Uh, Abel became the new compass. Uh, he was off off past the cows. So, I mean, but those, those torches gave us, like, a, a emboldenment, you know. We had something to fight the darkness and fight the night. And, and so we walked straight up to them cows, waving, waving them torches, saying, Yeah, yeah, and we, pat, we pushed them, them head of cattle back. And that right there felt really good. Because um, that was kind of like the first thing that we had been able to... Uh, um, actually defeat so to say you know and we pushed him back and we pushed right past him towards our dog and I mean <clears throat> so going to Abel um, you know when we were going to the pond it was like Abel stayed the same distance uh, he never got closer he never really got further but um, we were going to him not talking much just you know heading straight to him and he was getting closer with each each valley and each ridge. He, you could tell he was getting closer. He, he became our beacon in the darkness. And um, 
so to save a lot of you know just the same old same old we went through some fields and woods and you know we kept our torches lit um the coyotes stayed in pursuit but um that last stretch of woods um you could tell it was the last stretch of woods because abel was louder <clears throat> but um up where he was we started seeing him at like maybe 100 yards 200 yards back uh you know a couple football fields we could see the bright line of field that he was standing in uh there was no fog out there like we had we had cleared the fog the last ridge back in this last uh stretch of woods it had like the yellow carpet and so it was actually brighter but we kept the torches going you know and uh abel was sitting at that tree line and dude when that's when we started you know hey boy i mean we were saying his name to the point where um we were tearing up um it it felt really good to see that dog and um we're running straight to him like you know one of those movie moments except he ain't moving he's staying right where he was he now he's moving like he he's jumping up and down he'll do this thing where he'd stand up on his back legs and hold his paws against his chest and spin around you know uh standing on his back legs and bark and uh when and when he's that excited um he doesn't just wa wag his tail he wags like half his body from his rib cage back and you know that dog was excited but he was not coming in them woods um, so we had to run to him and once we got out of those woods you know he was licking and we fell down and I mean that was quite a moment it was emotional f for us and you could tell Abel was you know he could tell we were emotional and uh, we had a reunion there with Abel you know and by this time um, the the sun had started to come up to where it it was pushing back uh, the veil of uh, of of night you know on on the east side like the purple sky that would normally go from horizon to horizon now you were getting some blues down there you know and it was easy to tell what field we were in um, it was it was the uh, the one just past the one he ran off from um, and it's kind of hindsight looking back um, I should have known you know because that dog he me and that dog's got some good stories um, me and that dog go as the saying goes me and that dog go way back and um when he refuses to go somewhere uh, you'd have to be blind deaf or dumb to go past where that dog wouldn't walk and uh, that's another story but um, I should have known it when the, the second or third time I noticed he wasn't moving but I guess neither were we really um, but it sure felt like we were and so we got home from there and uh you know <coughs> like i was saying when you when you tell somebody about what you went through it helps you to uh bring it to the to reasoning um what you just went through and stuff and uh, uh, when when I would tell this, you know, especially up north, where uh, it was just too unbelievable for for some of them people, I would leave out. I would, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd end it as I never went back. But uh, <clears throat> truth be told, I, I did go back, or at least I tried. Now it wasn't immediate. I mean he he left out for boot camp we never went back he, he left out for boot camp and it, it took me telling that story you know for several months before i had the the audacity to go to go back um you know you 
tell it you tell it enough times and 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 the fear leaves and 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 that is replaced with excitement and uh so i i got excited enough and plus i was curious because um you know we set that place on fire and in my eyes we should have been coming home to uh, to helicopters and, and like fire truck sirens and you know we set we set that place on fire and um, but nothing ever came of it so curiosity alone made me want to go back uh, you know see and see what happened um, but it, it took a while before I, I got the audacity to even go try and pursue it and uh, I went back several times trying to find it and I, I could never find it and I mean e even if the trees had burned down uh, that pond would be there you know and <clears throat> I couldn't even find that pond uh, let alone the remnants of them them deadwood trees that should have burned up like Kenlin there was nothing ever um, now some other side tales that go along with this one um, is you know the reason we went when I had found that pond the originally um, I had you know I knew about the the wood and the way it reacted and that's what I brought home because it, it was in my nature I, I I would try and find something cool to bring home and tell a tale about you know and uh, so this time it was a chunk of, of that heartwood and it was about the size of, um, of uh, like a softball it was a decent sized chunk and I brought it home and I, I gave it to my dad and you know I showed him I showed him its its magical qualities and that was that uh, it would light up like it was a, uh, a lamp and for like that week or so <clears throat> he kept it and he would light it and then you know wave his hand and, and knock the flame off of it it's like an incense you know and uh, we come back and uh, one of the things that was curious that that went kind of hand in hand with what we experienced was um, that chunk of wood it, it never lit again and it actually got like this um, this coating now the first you know when he first noticed it it was almost like a ritual he would light it so when he went to light it and it wouldn't light you know he kind of he, he shaved off the black and cleaned it all up again but it was really really hard to shave you know and then that part would not light at all and uh, it, it kind of it got this like white film over it and uh, it got to the point where he couldn't even shave it no more and what he did was he wound up using like a like a wet saw and uh, he cut he you couldn't cut that you couldn't cut that wood with with a saw he had to use a wet saw to shape it and he turned it into a pipe and uh, he kept that pipe and it, it shined up beautiful and he called it ironwood is what he called it um, but <clears throat> that after that night that that wood wouldn't light either um, and it solidified to uh, like a, a rock um, and I mean that was one of the other things I looked for when I would walk around in the woods was I was trying to retrace where we were so I could find those sticks that we had dropped when we heard that knock and uh, I never even found them sticks but uh, yeah that's kind of a, a side story and, and for for years he had the proof because he kept that pipe he was quite proud of it it was pretty uh, it, it shined up nice and uh, uh, it was an oddity that went with that encounter and I mean uh, that was kind of like the whole reason we went out and then the other, this was the other hindsight, you know, when I wasn't able to find it after so many times going out, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm telling dad about it and I'm like, dude, I'm not able to find it. And he, he, had, he just randomly was like, you know, where you're describing, uh, and he pointed, you know, I'm not 
so where when a good storm was rolling through or a good sunrise or a good uh, mainly a good sunset uh, that was far more entertaining to us than uh, any TV show and we'd go outside to this pretty specific area and we would always we would watch these events you know um, as a family and um, so and normally that would be where we would be standing if the rare occurrence popped up for us to hear uh, what he called alpha dog and um, he pointed out the fact that where I kept going was in the exact same direction where you would normally hear that 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 sound except it'd be way off in the distance well we uh that's exactly where we wound up going and uh, I, I, I could never find it again I just found it you had to get lost to find it and uh, I'll just I'll end it there I hope you enjoyed <laughs>